we're going to be drafting a pattern piece for your arm it's going to be a long sleeve but you're going to use it to create any kind of sleeve short medium and i'm going to show you how to do that later we want an arm that's tailored to you is snug and it's not too tight in the previous video we already drafted the bodice piece and i showed you the equipment you need which is pretty much all of this you don't need as many pens one or two a pencil will do we've already taken our measurements for our body and i'm going to show you the measurements for the arm again just in case you want to take your hand width your bicep circumference all the way around and you want the bicep to your arm side i hope i'm saying that properly i don't know if i am but the arm side is the start of the armhole you also want to take the arm side measurements now with all your measurements you don't want them to be tight you want them to be exact but for the arm side you can tighten it a bit don't make it uncomfortable but you need that flexible measurement because it is the most fluctuating measurement i've noticed you also want your arm length in the clip i didn't bend my elbow but i advise you to do that you want that full length you want to measure your elbow to your arm side your elbow length optionally you can measure your elbow width and your wrist width they're not important but they're good to note down take a piece of paper that's wider than your bicep circumference and longer than your arm length then fold it that fold is going to mark your midpoint It's going to help you draft the front and the back of the arm because they're slightly different give yourself some space at the top i gave myself about an inch and then drew a guideline from that guideline you're going to mark your full arm length and then you're going to mark down the arm side to the bicep length I then marked those points along in a couple of paces so that when I drew the guidelines, they're going to be precise. Then go to the bottom line and you're going to mark on your hand width, not your wrist, your hand width. My hand width was about eight inches, so I marked half on both sides of my midpoint. You're going to do the same thing for your bicep circumference, half on each side. Now you want to be able to move your arm freely pull it up, pull it down. So we're going to add an inch to the end of both sides. Once done, you're going to connect that to your hand width points. Then you're going to draw a guideline to the midpoint of the top of your arm. I'm going to switch out my pen because I don't want this to be bold. It's just a guideline. We're going to use this to draft the entrance of the armhole, your arm side. At this point, I decided to mark on all the measurements I used so that I knew which one was the front and which one was the back because that's going to help you with the next couple of steps. Now, for the front and for the back, what you're going to do is you're going to take the difference here at the bicep and divide it by four. So mine was about 17, so I just halved it and halved it again. Then you're going to draw a line going straight up from those four points because they're going to help us know how to properly draw the curves. Once you've done that for the front, you're going to turn it around and do the exact same for the back. You want the front to be the most curved. You need a bit more movement at the front because of the curves at the front of your body. Line up your ruler to the diagonal you drew previously and add about an inch to it. Then move it to the middle line and add about three quarters of an inch, which is about 1.5 centimeters. Then move it to the final line. And this time you're going to dip it in. I'm going to dip it in about a quarter of an inch, which is about 0 0.7 centimeters. Then just try and draw a curve. You can use a French curve to help you here. You can't use the French curve for the whole thing. You're gonna to have to use a French curve for each section, just like I'm freehanding each section, and then draw it on for this last curve i like to make the end as flat as possible so that when it sews it lays a bit better and then curve it now we're going to do something similar to the other side but the measurements are not as pronounced match up your ruler to the diagonal and now only add about three quarters of an inch which is about two centimeters then to the middle you're only going to add about a quarter of an inch this time and then for the final line we're not going to actually indent it or increase it in any way then the same thing try and connect them up as smoothly as possible to get that nice curve what you want to do now is measure that curve and make sure it's actually the size of your arm's eye measurement you want this measurement you're taking to be between the normal measurement where you're not tightening anything or over loosening everything between that and the tightened version If you find that it's too small or too big, there's two ways you can adjust it. The first way is to take in the curve if you want to reduce the measurement or increase the curve. The next way is to check the distance between your arm side and your bicep 
First, make sure your measurement is correct. If it is correct, then you probably have about half an inch flexibility you can add or remove without making it too big or too small for your actual measurement. To take this black line and lift it up or pull it down and then redraw the curve using those four guidelines. I'd advise you to use the second method as a last resort. So the first method should be okay. Once you make an adjustment, make sure to check it that it's okay. And also double check with your bodice arm. Measure your front bodice and your back bodice armhole and make sure it matches your pattern for the arm. Then you can cut out your piece, making sure to follow the final curves that you've decided. What I then did was measure my elbow length and then mark on my elbow circumference and my wrist circumference and join those up. I'm not going to use that when I'm cutting out a long sleeve but it's there so that if I want to make a short sleeve or something more tailored I know which lines I need to use instead. Now in the next video I'm going to show you how to correctly add seam allowance because this was a basic pattern because from it hopefully you can manipulate and make special arms with creasing and patterns and pleats but in the next video I'm going to show you how to add seam allowance for your arm and for the bodice and how to transfer the darts well and make extra little tweaks as well as showing you how to actually draft from your pattern and read things correctly so i hope you enjoyed that video like if you liked it comment if you have a comment move on if you want to move on and of course i want you to remember you are wonderfully created